This is the Icon AH705 Auto ATU for the IC705 transceiver. They should have put it inside the transceiver, shouldn't they? Hmm. Physically, that would have been a bit of a problem. Let's take a closer look. Well, hello and welcome once again. My name's Peter Waters, G3OJV. And uh, I'm going to talk about the new ICOM AH705, the auto antenna tuner that is designed to be used with the IC705. Now, I have covered this very briefly when it first arrived, but I've now had time to do some tests on it, so I thought it would be great to share my findings with you. And I know that this particular ATU has caused a lot of interest because there's those that have said why wasn't it inside the IC705 to start with and um, others have said why do you need an antenna tuner anyway if you use a resonance antenna you shouldn't need an ATU. Well these are all valid comments I suppose but perhaps if I tell you my findings explain what I found then it will answer some of those criticisms. So Let's have a look. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what's in the box, um, which is really a repeat of an earlier video I did, just to give you, for those that haven't watched that video, to see what actually is in the box. And then I'll talk about the ATU and my findings. Connecting the ATU is quite simple. They supply two leads, each two metres long. You've got a BNC RF lead there, and you've got a stereo 3.5 millimetre control cable there. That means to say that if you want to extend the cable beyond two metres, you can make up your own lead using the 3.5 millimetre stereo plugs, or buy one, because they're quite commonly used for audio. And likewise, BNC leads, you can make one up or buy one. So it's not going to be too expensive if you want to extend the lead beyond the two metres supplied. If you do want to power the unit from an external source, there is a, a socket there for a 13.8 volt input, but I can't really believe that there'll be many occasions when you want to power it externally because the battery life is uh, quite long. This ATU is capable of matching both coax cable and an NFED wire, but the only socket for the aerial is this SO239 socket. For NFED wires, ICOM originally promised some adapter, but they decided not to include it. But in fact, there's not a problem. There is a PL259 included in the package, and all you need to do is just to connect a length of wire to the centre pin of the PL259 plug, plug it in, and you've got your NFED wire connector. Alternatively, uh, a banana plug will fit there as well. Now when it comes to connecting the ATU to the transceiver, I think ICOM made a little bit of a mistake really. The control cable comes out of one side and the RF uh, cable comes out of the other side. It would have made more sense, I think, if both cables came out of either the right or left hand side. But there we are. That's uh, the way it goes and it's not a major problem. Now the spec on the ATU says that it covers 160 metres through to 6 metres. That's quite a wide range. It also says that you should avoid using NFED half waves. I guess that's because it's a high impedance. And it also says that you should use alkaline AA cells. It needs two cells. Well, I'm not quite sure why it says alkaline because... Uh, I've been using them with rechargeable cells and no problem at all. I think the reason they recommend alkaline is because alkaline cells tend to last longer um, when the current drain is very low. And of course the current drain on the battery is about 1 milliamp unless it's tuning. So uh, I think as far as I can see, the rechargeable batteries are, are, are fine. Just make sure they're charged, I suppose. <laughs> and... Um, 
Well, let's see. We can't use NFED half waves. Um, oh, and the, the, the aerial, the NFED wire needs to be at least seven meters long on all bands apart from 160 meters where it needs to be a lot longer. Um, they recommend 30 meters. So let's see how we get on. Now for the first test, I strung up 20 meters of wire down my garden, which is a quarter wave on 80 meters. And it matched it as I expected it would. But when I fed it with 40 meters, which would make it an end fed half wave, it also matched it. So it looks as if it might be capable of matching an end fed half wave, despite what ICOM say. So this was getting interesting. I thought, well, let's see if I can push it a bit further. What I'll do is I'll run out, say, five meters of wire. That's two meters less than what ICOM recommend. Five meters of wire, which is approximately a quarter wave on 20 meters. And see what happens. Well, there was no problem on 20 meters as expected because that wire was a quarter wave long. But I tried it on 10 meters, which has made it an end fed, and it still worked. And it worked on 15 meters. So my five meters of wire would work on 10, 15 and 20, and also the two walk bands. I next tried it on 40 meters, and believe it or not, it resonated this five meter length of wire on 40 meters. So my final thought was, let's test it out on 80 meters. So yes, it works on 80 meters as well. That's quite amazing. Five meters of wire. Icon says seven meters, I found five meters. So that's an improvement on what Icon claimed. Now, a lot of people have suggested that if you're gonna use the IC705, it makes sense to use a resonant antenna. Well, there's two things I would say about that. First of all, if you're out operating portable, you can't always use a resonant antenna. The situation doesn't always permit it. And of course, there are times when you want to hop, hop from band to band. And whilst it may be okay to have a resonant antenna for one band, it starts to become rather cumbersome and often impractical to have an antenna that is resonant on all the different bands that you might want to operate on. But I thought that I would try something else. Now, I have in the past mentioned the doublet antenna. My thought was, if I could erect a doublet antenna that was suitable for portable operation, maybe I would have the benefit of operating on several bands. And of course, a doublet antenna really does need an antenna matching unit. So this is a prime example where an antenna matching unit is essential but also very useful. So I set, out, set about building myself a very makeshift temporary doublet. I think the height of the antenna at the center was about 10 foot, no more than that. So I got myself 10 foot of uh, ladder line and I made an antenna with legs that are approximately 20 foot in either direction. So it was a 40, 40 foot um, doublet fed in the center with ladder line. So I found that this doublet, which was about 13 meters long, fed in the center, worked on all bands from six meters through to 80 meters. Now you may have noticed that I did have to put a ballon in there. You need to put a ballon in there. It could be one to one or four to one, doesn't really matter. But you do need a ballon between the bottom of the balance line and the coax feed back to the um, ATU. The good thing about this, of course, is 
that you can have this antenna further away without having to extend the control cable. All you do is use a longer length of coax cable from the ballon back to the ATU. So it's quite a useful um, installation. Now, the antenna is physically short on 80 meters, so don't get too carried away with performance on 80 meters because it is only 13 meters long, but it does work. And it certainly works on the other bands very well indeed. I had a number of contacts and also, as usual, checked it with the reverse beacon and getting some very good reports from uh, within Europe on the, uh, the signal strength. So it does work very well indeed. Now, I, I, started, to, <laughs> I started to get carried away with seeing what this ATU was capable of. And I thought, I just wonder what will happen if I made the antenna very short. Now, it was very cold outside, so I decided to do this final test indoors. I used a buddy stick, but without the matching coil. The buddy stick, when it's fully extended, is approximately one and a half meters long. So what you see here is a one and a half meter vertical without a loading coil and with a very short counterpoise, just a wire laid on the floor. Let me, uh, let me show you what actually happened. Right, the first test is on 28 megahertz. That's tuned, okay. Next, 24 megahertz. Okay, and that's tuned, okay. Now 21 megahertz. Again tuned. Now 18 megahertz. Tuned again. Now the 20 meter band. Tuned again. Now let's try 30 meters. Let's match that as well. Now let's try 40 metres, which will be quite a severe test, I think. Well, surprisingly enough, it's matched it. Now we'll try 80 metres, which I suspect it won't match. Well, Believe it or not, it has matched it. I've now inserted the buddy stick coil uh, without uh, any shorts on it, so it's full length of the coil, which is naturally resonant just below the 40 meter band. So I'm assuming that this coil on 80 meters will act as a, a loading coil. So let's try it now. So here we are on the 80 meter band with the loading coil in circuit. Let's see what happens. Well, it's matched it, and you can you can probably hear the noise uh, coming up. Well, to say I'm impressed is a bit of an understatement. Uh, this antenna worked on six meters through to 80 meters on anything that I presented to it quite remarkable. Now that test you saw with one and a half meters uh, width, I mean obviously it's not going to radiate very well on 80 meters but if you wanted to chat to Joe down the road on 80 meters you probably could do. The good thing about this is it's so flexible. Now I haven't mentioned 160 meters. On 160 meters um, ICOM's specification is nearer the mark. You do need around about 25 or 30 meters of wire for it to resonate and that I suspect is because on 160 meters the components in the ATU um, haven't got the range that they have on the other band so on 160 meters it's stretching it a bit it does work it does work but you do need a, a, a length of wire around about 25 or 30 meters long but do remember if you can't put that amount of wire out on 160 meters you can always put a loading coil in the wire and then you could probably resonate 160 meters on 15 or 20 meters of wire with a loading coil in series 
Um, two things I've mentioned. The antenna tuner has got a uh, sort of grommet inside or a gasket inside, so it is waterproof. I would say it is shower proof really because I wouldn't want to keep that outside permanently. If you're operating outside and it's raining I don't think you'll have a problem just bring it in and dry it but um, because you've got a PL259 there because you've got a, a, a 3.5 millimeter um, connector there um, I'm not so sure that uh, I would say it's it's weatherproof. I would say it is shower proof and I would have no hesitation in using it outside but I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't keep it out I wouldn't want to keep it outside on a permanent basis but it works extremely well. Now the other interesting fact which I haven't mentioned and I, I should have mentioned earlier <laughs> is that all the tests I carried out with the NFED wire were without a counterpoise. That's right without a counterpoise I did try putting a counterpoise on and there wasn't that much difference really on reverse beak and I couldn't detect really any difference. So there was no counterpoise. I mean the only counterpoise effectively was the short length of cables going from the ATU back to the transceiver. I think if I was operating portable I probably would put out a counterpoise. It just seemed the right thing to do. But I do make the point that I didn't use a counterpoise. So there we are. We have the ICOM AH705, the ATU that should have been inside the transceiver, but isn't, probably because it's too big, and probably the size um, is one of the reasons why it has such a wide range. Like it or not, the ATU is outside the transceiver. Do you need one? Well, that depends on your style of operating. But really and truly, when I started this review, I thought I was going to just check an ATU and it would work on on the bands within the spec that ICOM set out and that, that you couldn't use an NFED half wave and you couldn't use very short antennas. I was completely wrong and completely blown away. It's a really great antenna tuner. I just wonder, would ICOM make a 100 watt version? Hmm, interesting. So. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative. And as usual, if you've enjoyed it and you want to keep in touch, press the subscribe button. But until then, enjoy your ham radio. Remember, good weather is coming. It's only just around the corner. It depends on how far that corner is away. In the meantime, enjoy yourself. Speak soon.